Uh, Michael, uh, this will be my next question for you. So uh, generally we are seeing this heated debate, especially in the custody industry, uh, logged custody or self custody, right? And uh, we are seeing the shift uh, as in, uh, the decent life space is getting more traction and it is gaining more popularity. We are seeing the, the self custodial side of things getting more dominance. So uh, what do you think will be better for let's say enterprises or asset managers or institutions? And uh, what are the things they should be looking for when they are choosing either of the two? So the, there are various different iterations of how to hold assets. And Aaron touched on it when it was specific to asset managers, traditional and crypto managers. It comes down to firstly, recognizing the demand, what she highlighted was um, either version want exposure to Bitcoin, it's now how you hold it. So ETF is essentially wrapping Bitcoin in, a, in an equity wrapper. And that's because the funds are set up to hold tradable equity um, instruments. So if you look through uh, from funds through to corporates, they still face the exact same problem. It, it just may not be as acute. It's how do you hold these assets? Because of course, crypto originally was an enthusiast exercise. An individual can, can enter it if they're comfortable with the arrangements with a corporation. You have controls, you have board of directors, you have security procedures. Asset managers have investment committees and, and, and vote on transacting very similar to a board, um, depending on what the rules are for the fund. So it comes down to the rules in which an organization, corporate or asset manager, is allowed to hold material assets. And this continues to change. Like Aaron said, uh, there are good asset man uh, there are good custodians, legal custodians out there. Uh, the difficulty is, of course, that's a third party holding your assets. And as we know, there are break-ins, there are fraudulent businesses, assets go missing, and unfortunately in crypto land. Um, there's zero return rate unless the, the hacker or, or the person responsible volunteers the assets back. So uh, it's good because you can, a, a custodian, you can entrust their setup. They have the security arrangements. They've got the experience for holding these assets. They work within uh, regulatory frameworks for where these corporations live so that it matches their needs from a corporate governance perspective. It is expensive and there's the downsides we've talked about. Then you look at, at, at self-custody. So holding the assets directly really comes down to a technical exercise of if you, if you accept you, you take title of the assets because you own them and you control them by virtue of holding the private key, which is typically the measure, the control of the asset at the end of the day in most jurisdictions. Well, how do you control that private key? So to date, if you leave service providers alone for a moment and you're going to take control of that key yourself, uh, your, your options are limited. Is a corporation going to be comfortable with a thumb drive sitting in a desk of someone, you know, in treasuries uh, or a pocket? No, of course not. Um, you know, you look at Tesla for an example, I'm sure Elon Musk would love to have that thumb drive for the Bitcoin on a chain around his neck. But the, the directors aren't going to allow it. The constitution where uh, the companies are based off and how they're run won't allow those sorts of things. There's very specific rules. So what you need in a self-custody arrangement is something that is secure and something that doesn't allow um, any interference between the blockchain, the, the technology of trading the asset, and the authorization given. So you get down to uh, software driven systems typically because they're efficient compared to hardware. There's, there's less failure concerns, there's less physical theft concerns. And Aaron touched on it, uh, COP is a great example because they, they have all the various security instruments, the fragmented key, uh, signing the um, multi-party signature from a corporate governance perspective, so not one person can move the assets. This is what's important with corporations and frankly for asset managers to have proper corporate governance around their assets. Uh, you can't take, in, in asset manager world, you can't take people's money uh, without, you can't get a financial services license to be an asset manager without uh, procedures around control of assets, for instance. Now, often you defer those to the custodian. Sometimes they do self-custody. Sometimes the prime broker holds the assets for you. 
but there are procedures in place for moving assets. So if you talk about self-custody, you need a system which can match your procedures and not force a corporation to change their procedure to suit the software. Uh, if we're talking about crypto going mainstream and getting picked up for widespread use in treasury and corporations and asset managers taking exposure, um, the systems in place need to match what the organisations are doing to date, telling them to fundamentally change their, their sign-off processes and their controls uh, is going to bring uh, adoption to a halt. So what we need are solutions which match how a, a firm may control its, its um, bank accounts, for instance, usually multi-sig of directors transacting to move assets. Crypto should be the same. If we've got software packages, such as Unidu EP, for instance, um, these need to slot in and allow the corporation, the organisation, the hedge fund, whatever uh, organisation it is, to continue to operate as it would with any other asset class. That's the key to adoption here. If we try to force them down a different route, it, it, it will be piecemeal. People um, won't take it up as quickly.